Well, hello and welcome to another amazing guest interview here on the Profit with Law podcast. I'm your host, Moshe Amsel, and I have a treat for you. Now, this is a very interesting one. And I, I, I often say I have a treat for you and we have an amazing guest. It's a great conversation. Um, and we haven't recorded it yet. So I, I'm already, I already know stepping into this that this is going to be an episode that is going to be just filled with a ton of value for you. If you're out running in the shower, driving your car, doing any of those things, and you're going to, you're just going to be tempted to like, oh my gosh, I need to take notes. Um, when that happens, just know that we have you covered. Uh, we, take all the notes for you, write a complete blog post around the episode. You can get that at profitwithlaw.com. You can also see uh, a portion of it in the description right below the podcast in your podcast player. Uh, but the reason I know that this is going to be good is because our guest today, we had our interview scheduled and we connected and spent the entire time of the interview just chatting and talking about the industry and talking about uh, what um, is is ailing law firms today and and what the solutions are um and just just was an amazing conversation but we couldn't get an interview uh recorded and then we started our talk today and we're 30 minutes into our call and we haven't even started the recording process so we finally said okay let's actually get something recorded but i can tell you if i'm spending that much time in the green room i am getting a ton of value I'm going to make sure that we can extract that value for you as well. So our guest today is Philip Fairley. He's the president and owner of the Rainmaker Institute, the nation's largest law firm marketing company that focuses exclusively on client generation, lead conversion, and data analytics. During his time at Rainmaker, he co-developed Turbine, registered trademark there, the only software platform that automates the intake process and Rainalytics, also registered trademark, don't steal it, the only tool which automatically measures all law firm data. Philip holds degrees from Northwestern University, Wheaton College, and Keller Graduate School. Hey, I'm a Keller Graduate student as well. Uh, is a NCAA Division I national debate champion and is a recognized expert on intake, lead conversion, legal tech, and innovative marketing. His and Rainmaker's expertise has been noted and quoted in the American Bar Association's journal, Entrepreneur Inc., Fortune Small Business, Harvard Management update business advisor the chicago tribune cranes chicago business and attorney at law magazines that's a lot of publications prior to owning rainmaker he was the founder and ceo of two successful companies that specialized in the legal tech cybersecurity, and communications he is married with three children and enjoys the arizona lifestyle mountain biking and coaching youth sports rainmaker has helped over twenty thousand attorneys and law firms grow their business by learning and implementing our proven their proven marketing and intake strategies Philip, welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much, Moshe. I really appreciate the, the kind introduction. And you're right. This is taking a little bit to get recorded because we've just created this synergy and just sharing things because there's a lot that's going on right now in the legal space. Um, but I really appreciate the introduction. The awesome. What is the temperature in Phoenix, Arizona today? Well, it is. Oh, it, it's just a, a, a cool 102 degrees here. That's, that's awesome. All. <laughs> right. You know, stay tuned. It's going it's, to it's, it'll get warm soon. I'm in New York and we've been having some some abnormally warm weather for the last uh, week and a half, two weeks. But last night it dropped to like 40 degrees overnight. And, um, you know, I, 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 I also moonlight um, as a paramedic here in, in Rockland County, New York. Um, I don't know when the last time I spoke about that was. So for some of you who are new listeners, this might be new information for you. Um, exciting stuff. I actually delivered a baby last Saturday night, um, which is one of the coolest calls that we can go on uh, because we're usually helping somebody. We're trying to save a life or we're trying to you know, help somebody in their medical crisis, medical emergency. But here we get an opportunity to, to start a new one. So uh, or help a new one enter the world. So it's really cool. Um, but anyway, um, I wasn't home. I was working. So when I came home in the morning, <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't there to turn the heat on when I first woke up. So my poor kids are like trying to play their iPads bundled on the couch under blankets. Daddy, it's cold. So um, well, 100 degrees. Well, we'll, we'll take that. Yeah, well, I figured after spending over two decades in Chicago, I earned the badge um, because we get to turn our furnace off probably about the middle of January. So it's a nice it's a nice uh, situation to be in. 
Yeah, <laughs> Phoenix is a beautiful area. I I I visited Phoenix when I was in. Uh, I used to be in the IT industry, and there was a, a year and a half or so that I that I was going around the country as a salesman for the IT company I was working for. Um, and interestingly enough, I closed. Uh, over thirty million dollars in sales in that one one and a half year period that I was doing that. Oh, wow. um, it was pretty wild, but I was also like sometimes I'd be in three cities on the same day. Like oh. I would I would fly in, go for, go to a meeting, then fly to the next one, go to a meeting, and then fly to the third one for the next day's meeting. But anyway, um, I flying into Phoenix was one of the coolest experiences because there's just that, like it's, it, there's a mountain on each side. It's like of four mountain ranges here. Yeah. Right? And it's, and, it's and like you're just kind of like plopping in between the mountains and, and, and you've got all the like radio communication towers on the mountain and stuff like that. So during the day, you don't see that you just fly in and see the mountains. But if you're coming in at night or you're leaving at night, you, the whole mountain is lit it's up like with all the flashing show. lights. It's really cool. Um, but anyway, let's let let's jump into this. People want to know who Philip Fairley is, and that you had two other businesses, and then Rainmaker. So give us give us the the broad strokes of of your history and how you got to to working with law firms, and and then like where where's your focus today with Rainmaker, and we'll jump into a conversation from there. Yeah, that that's a really good place to start. So I've gotten a, a storied history um, to be where I am today. I've been through a lot of. In fact, I think everybody has in their in their professional career. I I, I think you had like three lives. Um, I'm on my fourth life, and that's okay. Um, but started out at the ripe age of 25 years old, thinking that I knew how to start a business, grow a business, and create an empire. Right? Because I could do it better than the other person. Um, and I found out really early on, um, and it was more my desire to innovate and blaze my own trail. And that's what brought me into being a business owner, um, because it didn't run in our family very, it didn't run in our family, except for my brother that I'll mention in just a moment. Um, so I was living in Chicago, and the tech industry was booming. And there was just ripe opportunity. I saw it, and I, cap I captured it, right, right, rent, right then and there, quit my job, had a $1,500 a month contract and a new baby on the way, just got married. Okay, it's time to start a business. Um, and oh, by the way, that was in 2001. And if you remember, that was the dot-com bust area. So oh, I remember. Started a tech firm, right? <laughs> Crazy. Um, and it worked, right? And so I went through that and I started a couple other um, firms, uh, companies in that industry, and, and then started to steer towards legal just because of the high need of technology going from you know, cloud and all of these new innovative new technologies that, that they could leverage that they just weren't doing. And so ended up really um, focusing on the legal industry in that space and worked with a lot of different law firms on, on the technology side of it, right? Really to enable them to work better and more efficiently. Um, and then went through that, started a VoIP company. When that hit the market, um, successfully was able to sell that off. And, uh, and then what happened is going through this entire journey, um, got a phone call. Um, remember exactly where I was. I was in the backyard mowing my lawn in, in the suburb of Chicago. Um, and it was my brother. Now, me and my brother were four years separated. And you've probably heard of his name. His name is Stephen Fairley. And he was really a trailblazer. In fact, I would, I would call him, kind of say a titan in the legal marketing space. I really think he kind of evolved and maybe even created this, this um, niche within, within the marketing industry where no one else was doing any marketing targeted towards just for small law firms. Started out with coaching, writing books. Um, we create a lot of content. That's the reasons we're, we're published everywhere. But that phone call was probably, you know, in life, you have certain lines on, on your life, on, on your lifespan, you have certain lines that are markers for big events, that, you know, good or positive, positive or, or negative. Mm -hmm. And that phone call, and, and I imagine a lot of you listening here have had that phone call before. Maybe it's from a, a spouse, God forbid, a business partner, and a lot of law firms get calls from their business partner that change their trajectory. Um, but this one was for my brother. And unfortunately, he had diagnosed with really, really bad cancer. 
And so within eight weeks, um, it wasn't my decision. It was our family decision um, with my sister, my brother, my mom, and my dad, and my my starting family at that time. They were just little babies. And we made a decision that, uh, and within eight weeks, we had sold our house. I sold my last remaining two businesses. And I was pulling up to a new house here in Phoenix to live. We relocated our entire family. And the whole goal of that was, is to be with my brother because we shared so many. We went to college together, like 2,000 miles away, different colleges, and still would go. We were best men in each other's wedding. We shared bunk beds in our trailer on a dirt road growing up in Maine. We were, when he was starting his company, I was starting mine. We had free co consulting and like a board of, we were so close to each other. And it was really, really devastating. And at the time, I didn't realize the severity of it. Um, but I, in the back of my mind, I knew that there was a potential to, to, to really, to really go south with that. So, and I don't say this to, to say that I'm a good brother or, or a good sibling, because I imagine there's a lot of you on this that, that are listening that would do the same thing for a close, maybe even a friend or a family member. Right. But I say that, um, because there was a path that was opened up and I didn't know what the journey would be. I just knew what the next step was. And so just by faith, took that first step. And that first step was coming down here to take care of my brother. And in the, in the, in the chaos of that relocating, my wife had never lived outside of Chicago with new kids. We didn't know anybody, right? Just relocating here. But in the chaos of all of that, um, I started working at Rainmaker. And I started working in our lead conversion department, which, you know, Moshe had talked about with Turbine and Rainalytics, like really taking leads and converting them into clients. Um, and that really gave me a clear understanding of how law firms operate, how they sell, how they attract, how they retain staff, how they convert and where the opportunities are. So I really learned it, it, it what I'd call in the trench learning, hands-on. And so about after three and a half, four years of that, um, unfortunately, through that journey in the chaos, we lost our brother. Um, it was pretty emotional. My daughters were there the weekend. In fact, when, when he had passed, my daughters were in the same room and helped clean him up. And and I and, and I don't normally share that part of the story, but just to let you know the intimacy and the closeness of our family, because that trumps everything I've ever done in my life. Um, and then after the morning, which I don't think will ever end, um, I jumped into the role of the ownership of Rainmaker Institute. And then taking on Rainmaker, coming from my technology background, I just saw some really big opportunities, Moshe. And some of those opportunities started with, with our software platform. Um, we were beholden to our vendor. So I said, we're going to create our own to future-proof our firm and our clients. Then we needed better data. And so we purchased and then retooled and evolved a business intelligence platform that we call Rainalytics that plugs into our, our law firm's clients. Um, and so along those ways, the, then we started innovating on our marketing services. And then just this last year, um, the end of last year, we just developed this amazing, what we call an attorney influencer system. And it's really focuses on leveraging video in, an, in the easiest way possible at a very low cost so that every law firm can, can attract new clients, can brand themselves and convert more of those leads into clients by telling their story, by putting out new content. Because when we started, we, we we had like 40 JDs on staff that was writing blogs and contents. This was back in like the early 2000s, right? That's what was moving the needle with Google. That whole equation has changed. So one of the neat things coming from technology is I'm able to, I, I saw the company as Rainmaker as a whole in the, in the, and the, the recipes and, and the results were amazing. We needed some better ingredients. Um, and so that's what we did. And so it has allowed me to take my technology innovative background and apply that to our law firm owners. So that's what brings me joy. I never knew I would fall in love with a company like Rainmaker and our clients like I did in such a quick manner. Maybe it was because of maintaining my brother's legacy because what he grew was an amazing company with amazing clients that we've we've helped more law firms in the United States grow into seven and eight figure companies than anyone else. 
We've literally worked with over 20,000 law firms and attorneys since 1999 when we started. So I wanted to continue that legacy, but modernize it to meet the needs of what's going on today. Because as you know, Moshe, right now, like if the only constant in the legal space is change, right? There's in Arizona, non-attorneys now can own law firms. Mm -hmm. There's over 43, last time I checked, um, venture capitalists and angel funds investors waiting and applying in California to do the same, but California doesn't even have that capability, but it will come. And then with with AI and what does that mean? There are so many changes. One of the things I always look at and I love where there's change, there's opportunity. And that's what I've done to embrace with Rainmaker. And I have to tell you, speaking to thousands of attorneys um, since I've taken over, you know, dozens of associations running our Rainmaker retreat, two-day boot camps, just interacting with these clients and these attorneys that are just looking to get rid of the fluff. There's so many people out there that will say, hey, I'm going to 10X your firm in two weeks. You're like, okay. Um, getting back to basics, but modernizing those strategies or the ingredients in the recipe, that's what's moving the needle. And there's so much clutter. There's so much noise. And then as the small business owner that maybe has 10, 15 employees in their company, maybe five employees, they're like, I don't know where to go to make my phone ring more. Right. And so that way, using my background in technology and innovation and reframing some of the ingredients in our recipe here, that's the exciting part about Rainmaker. I kind of call it Rainmaker 2.0. Um, and I do that tongue in cheek because it will always be built on the basic foundation of what my brother Stephen started. And that's education first. And you know what? As an attorney, Sometimes you can over-educate people in your consultations. I see that every day. But honestly, this, this same approach really works when you're marketing for, for potential clients. The more you educate, the, the less you're selling. If you're not teaching, you're selling. No one wants to be sold. So we educate, we educate, we educate. And then we say, hey, you either have time or money, right? You know how to do it yourself or we can help you with it. And it's really, that's been the basic foundation of Rainmaker since the start. That will never change because there's always a need for pointed strategies like that you can go implement tomorrow on your own to make a difference. That knowledge is just really lacking in our industry. Only there's, I could name a couple other companies and people that are doing that, but those are far and few between. Philip, thank you so much for sharing your story. And um you know, I, 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 when we spoke, you, you know, you shared the story with your brother, but, but not at the level of detail that you shared today. And, um, you know, it just it was sending chills down my spine and I'm sure our listeners are feeling the same. Like, um, first of all, it's an amazing blessing that you had, that you were able to spend the last, you know, the right. last months with your brother, yeah. um, and, and, and kind of help him walk through that process. Um, but it's also amazing that, you felt called to basically just uproot your life and go and be with him and then to take over his legacy, to, to assume it and, and make it your own, uh, to continue to carry the torch and, 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 and then put your own flavor on it, make it, you know, make it different, make it better, um, w without taking away what he built. I, I think the, the whole thing is, is just amazing and, and really a testament to, uh, to what you do and, and what you want to do. And, you know, there's there's such a um, feeling in the marketplace that that marketers are are dirty. They're out to get you. They just want your money. And and I mean, there are players that that we align ourselves with uh, over time that we've figured out. You know have their hearts in the right places and are not trying to just dupe somebody into giving them money without giving them results. Um, but at the same time, it you know, like w we need attorneys to see more of that because there's such an aversion to marketers to the to the detriment of the growth of the law firm um so I, I really appreciate you sharing that because i think that is what is going to allow our listeners to open up to the rest of our conversation um and there's one more barrier to our conversation that we really need to to clear up and that is um somebody starts listening to a conversation about a marketing agency or company and they immediately say oh you know they're probably for a larger law firm than me 
You know, they may they might not be for me. I'm too small. I'm I'm too small of a fish for them to even pay attention to me. Um, and people do that at every level of business. I mean, they could be <laughs> everything. You know, they could be right? a five million dollar law firm, and they're like, oh, he probably works with twenty million dollar law firms, and I'm just a peon. Mm-hmm. Or they could be a three hundred thousand dollar law firm, and they're thinking, well, they only work with people who are close to a million or over a million. Um, so I want to start there because I want to make this conversation all inclusive and I'm going to share how I work with my clients and how I feel. And then I want you to tell me how you work with your clients, because I really think that um, every single law firm at every stage should have a marketing agency they're working with. Even we have uh, the CMO of, of a nine uh, office law firm. Um, in Virginia, that's on our coaching staff, right? She she is one of our coaches. She coaches on marketing to our to our people, and even as the CMO in a very highly successful, really large law firm, she still is using marketing agencies to execute on some of the strategies that they're that they're implementing. Um, there is there, there's really never a time that you don't need somebody, and. When you're operating at the lower end of the spectrum, when you're operating in the earlier stages of your growth, that's when you really need the marketing agency and you really need the expertise to help you get the traction so that you're you're growing your business more rapidly. Um, and the reason that people are afraid to do it is because they don't understand the math behind the business, right? They don't understand how much they should be spending on marketing. Well, and not just that, they've all been burned. And when you're that small, you need to pay a dollar and have your phone ring or it's not right. And if you're in a nine office, you know, law firm, there's a different approach to it. Yes, exactly. Um, But one of the things that 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 law firm owners need to recognize is that you need to spend the money in order to make the money, right? It's not like, oh, when, and that's this, we play this game as, as entrepreneurs with everything we do. It's not just marketing. It's like, oh, I need to hire somebody. When I get to this level of revenue, I can afford to hire that person. When I get to this level of, of revenue, <laughs> I can afford to hire the marketing agency. And the reality is, is that it's it's flipped, right? Like if you want to operate at that level, you need to spend at that level. Before what are you, you doing get to get to, to your level. goals? Like, right. what are you doing to get to that level? Right. So if, if for example, you be, you you feel like 10% of your revenue should be going to marketing and you want to have a $500,000 firm, you need to be spending $50,000 a year on marketing. And many people who are less than 500000 are, even if they're spending on marketing, they're like, oh, I can only afford 2000 or 3000 but you're not going to get to 500000 if you're not willing to spend four or five thousand dollars a month um so all of this to say what what is your ideal client and Mm -hmm. when is somebody too small or do you agree with me and they just need to figure out how they're going to pay for it but really there's Mm -hmm. nobody who's too small to hire to hire you right well we've started with 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 there was this, I, I talk about this firm, PIB, they're on the East Coast, they've, they've exploded. We haven't done business with them in a, in a couple of years, but they quit their law firm and they had zero dollars in their first spend without, and I was like, didn't you bring any files with you? And, no, nothing, you're just done. Um, and they went in and went all in on marketing. And now I believe they have nine or 10 offices. Um, I absolutely agree. So if you have a goal of getting to a $500,000 law firm, a $300,000 law firm, if your goal is to make it a $1.5 million law firm, um, those are great goals. Then my question comes to you is, what are you doing to reach those goals? Um, So you have to be smart with it, especially when at that level, you almost feel like every dollar you spend is you have to open up your personal wallet, you're reaching your back pocket and you have to pull it out. So that makes it really painful. I know I bootstrapped every single one of my four businesses that I've started and sold and ran. Um, When I say bootstrap, Um, Maybe I started with one client um, while I had to feed my family. So the urgency, I completely understand it. And and Moshe, that's the genius of our approach of educating first, because we always at the end, we say you have time or money, right? You really do. You've got time or money. So if you're a $300,000 law firm, you probably don't have either. Um, You're probably working 70 hours on on a part-time week, on your vacation week. You're probably putting in 70 hours, right? right. Um, and I get it. 
And a lot of attorneys, they wear that as a pride of honor. I'll work you under the desk uh, 90 hours a week. Uh, when's, uh, that's my part-time job. Um, and, and so how do you navigate that? That's one of the hardest parts of, of being a business owner. The difference between signing the front of a check and the back of the check, it boils down to this type, part of the conversation. Um, and so our approach has always been to educate, educate. Like we have these Rainmaker Retreat um, boot camps, two-day high intensive classroom setting, no tchotchkes, no tons of it, none of that. It's like no pitches. It's like, here's 40 ways to fix your intake. Here's 32 ways to, all that type of stuff. That's our approach to it. Um, and the neat part about this is if you don't have time and you don't have money, which a lot of small, you know, solos or real small law firms are at, um, you have to set aside time and you can do that if you think there's going to be an ROI or return on your time. If you're doing it sharp and smart, that's what you have to do because you will never get to your goal unless you're a PI attorney and you stumble across a big accident or you sell your, you know, somebody comes in and, you know, mesothelioma and you sell that to one of the big firms, you get a big paycheck, you're right now, what do I do? Other than that, but you have to be smart about it. And that's why when we talk about, even when you're doing a webinar yesterday, um, here's how we you know, do our videos for our clients, A to Z, how we script, shoot, set up, distribute, and all of those things. Why? Because if you don't have time or money, then I can't say go buy some scratch offs to get the money um, or go take out a loan or go in debt for this. I would never write too much pressure on your marketing company. Don't do that, right? But you then do have to carve out time. Just like we talk about, if you're taking consults in your office, you better carve out time every day because if you push your consults off five or six days, they've already hired another firm. So you just have to set this time apart aside to do this. And if you know the three or four strategies and goals and actually activities, not just theories, not just change your mindset, you know, uh, strategies in the trench, do this, then this, then this, then this. If you do that, if you understand that, it's much easier to set aside that couple hours a month to do that. And so at our retreat, we track the data. We run our company just like we run our clients. Data, data, data. Why? It doesn't lie. And it takes out all the politics, all the hurt feelings, everything. Um, and you, when you look at the data and you run it by data, you will then see the results of what you're doing. And at the Rainmaker retreat, we we've tracked everybody. And we started our retreats in like 2003. Um, and at one point we were doing 11 of them a year for like a 10 year span. Um, and we would have people come over like, why is this person coming back? Why is this person coming back the third time? Oh my goodness. They came back the fourth time. And then they signed up for one of our done for you services. Oh. They were implement, and, and we have thousands of reviews that say just to this. We started to implement some smart strategies that we could do on our own that you taught us, and we saw results. And then we wanted more. And then we saw some more results. So I could set, I felt like I could set some more time aside to do that. Right. Yep. And then they're like, now I've seen enough results where I can come in and get that two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten thousand dollar marketing plan. Because even if you're a small company, a $2,000 marketing plan actually can get you some traction. Sorry, you're not going to be on Google pay-per-click. I mean, you're just not going to compete in your market unless you're in the middle of nowhere. Um, but there are some really low hanging fruits that actually you can be doing for really low cost or even on your own that will make your phone ring. <clears throat> but then the reason we started our lead conversion system is we just used to do marketing until about 2005, I think it was. Um, our clients would come, oh, all these leads are garbage. They suck, right? You ever said that to your marketing company before? <laughs> <laughs> yes, said everybody. I'll just answer for you. Um, and then we'd ask them, okay, okay, let's retool this. Let's go over. Okay. Oh, no, a whole new set. <clears throat> they all suck too. Okay. So what are you doing with these leads? Well, our receptionist answers the phone and tries to set an appointment. Okay. What happens when she's at lunch or after hours? Um, do you just call them once? Yeah. If they don't want to set an appointment, they, they don't want to set an appointment. Oh my gosh. Um, lead nurturing was just completely out of the window because so many law, so many marketers, let alone law firm owners, they have this one huge misconception. 
My marketing stops when my phone rings. Yep. Oh, goodness. It's not the case. Your marketing changes into nurturing. So that's why we created the whole automation on the lead conversion side, because we can you can bring the leads to the table. But if you don't convert those leads, your marketing is always going to cost you two times more. Three. Now you have to pay $5,000 a month as a solo firm, because if you want results, you've got to have somebody that's not just answering the phone, but that's selling an appointment that then's nurturing those leads. Because if you don't do that, that actually is a law firm, a small law firm owner. That's probably your first best use of your time. Get an intake specialist. Make sure they're a salesperson, not the receptionist, not the lady that's worked or the man that's the, the guy that's worked in your law firm for the last 12 years, like that you don't even want to talk to that's crotching. Yeah, we'll put them in on our phones because nobody wants to deal with them. We'll, we'll put them on the phone. And, and, and you're like, these are the directors of first impression. That's another term we created. My brother created that a while ago because they are the face of your firm. So if you want to capitalize on every lead that you're struggling to get in and paying a lot of time or money to get in, get an intake process. And it doesn't have to be a complete system, but everybody knows what their job is. And you have nurturing, touch, 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 seven to 10 times, get them to the next stage, keep them in your, that right there will give return more money than any Google pay-per-click campaign that you could ever spend. So there's all these like low hanging fruit. That's not rocket science. It's like business sales. And I know that's a dirty word, but remember, they're not calling you to buy a vacation or a set of tires. They're calling you because it's probably one of their perceived worst days of their life. They have a need. It's your job to get them out of the shopping mode into the buying mode. You do that with intake. So when you spend and get the, your phone to ring, whether that's through networking groups or, 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 or referrals from other attorneys or your friends, you've got to convert them. And then when you convert them at a higher rate, now you take some of that and invest it back in your marketing and start stuffing the top of your funnel. Too many attorneys. I need more leads. I need more leads. I need more leads. Well, I'm like a lot of attorneys, you probably don't need more leads right now. There's some of you desperately do, right? Don't get me wrong. Right. Um, but a lot of you don't need more leads. You need more clients. Right. Your phone rings enough. You just think they all suck. No, they're just hiring your competitors because your director of first impression fell flat on their face. I don't care if they're a referral. They're looking at your reviews. I don't care if they're your um, they're your neighbor. They're going to call your firm and they're going to get an impression of you. What does that first seven seconds look like? Because that's about how long you get to make a first impression. So there's all yeah, kinds and, of things to do. And with and I think you you know you 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 kind of just breeze past it. You said you know like seven to ten touch points, and I I think that we we really need to 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 remember that. Like if you think <laughs> about any major purchase decision that you've ever made, um, like how many of our listeners have walked into a car dealer? And bought a car without doing any research beforehand. You just walked in and said, Hey, I need a new car. Show me, show me the best one for me. And you walked out with the keys, right? Like it doesn't happen. You you visit four different dealers. You look for the one that has the right set of specs that you're looking for. You do a little consumer reports digging beforehand to make sure that it's, you know, it's got a good rating where you you look to see what's, you know, what's my neighbor driving so that I could one up them, whatever the, whatever, <laughs> whatever is, is motivating you there. There's many different touch points in that buying process until you actually oh. buy. And how many times have you gone into a dealership and said, well, my experience in here sucked. So when I do go by, even if it's going to, I'm in a Toyota dealership, even if I'm buying a Toyota, I'm going to go to a different Toyota dealership to buy, right? Um, and and that's what's happening with your clients. Um, well, you said something in there that that is probably could be foreign to a lot of law firms. Now, if you're over a $2 million law firm, this is probably not foreign to you. If you're under two, it probably is. You were talking about their customer journey. You may not even know that your customers have a journey. That's why we secret shopped over 10,000 law firms, because you don't know what your journey is. And if you don't know the experience that like Netflix and Amazon that people want, 
you put up so many barriers of entry. You put up like we had a bankruptcy firm. They were doing about 22% of all the bankruptcies in Oregon. Now they're up to about 31%. That's a big chunk of the business, right? Um, well, they would have somebody even before they'd set up a meeting. They're like, here's our 13 page um, client intake form. Oh my gosh, what a barrier of entry. But here's the problem. They started getting a bunch of bad reviews on it. Um, and and the, we just started working with them. And, and, and I was like, what are you doing with this? And why are you getting these negative reviews? And pissed? They're not even your clients and they're pissed off. Well, we go down through it and they literally, because it's bankruptcy. There's a lot of stuff that you need to know, a little stuff. You need a lot of stuff that's good to know. And then a lot more stuff of information out there. But really it comes down to two or three questions, whether they can, you can really get help or not, right? That question was like on page seven or eight in the middle of <laughs> everything. It's like, right. why? Are you this... at least six months behind and paying your, <laughs> paying, uh, right? paying your stuff, right? Like, <laughs> like, I'm like, name, phone number, email address, ask that question. I'm like, stop making it hard. So if you don't know what your customer journey is, you're, you're going to fail. And, and when you're talking about, I did freeze by it, seven to 10 touches. That's per stage. People are like, well, isn't that unethical? Won't they think I'm spamming them? Won't they be pissed off? Um, they're not calling for a vacation or a new car at the Toyota dealership. They're calling for something. People just don't shop attorneys. So what you're doing is you're driving them to your competitors because of your customer journey is horrible and not thought through and just grew organically. You don't have a director of first impression. So all your money and effort you're spending on generating leads you're putting your director of first, they're in charge of your cash flow. You got to understand that. The person that answers your phone is in charge of your cash flow. So you better make sure they're good. And that way you start converting at least 25, 30% of the people that show up. And, and most people are like, oh, I convert great. I'm convert great. I'm like, yeah, because you're saying, if I'm sitting kneecap to kneecap across from somebody and they've got a problem and I've got a solution, I'm closing 80%. I call that an order taker. What I'm talking about is the ones that don't set the appointment. Do you count that in your numbers? What about the ones that are unqualified? What are the ones that don't show? What about the ones that don't hire at the consult, but that take three months to get them? What are you doing with them? That's why so many attorneys like, yeah, intake, conversion, I close everything. Yeah, because they're all friendly sitting in front of you. But what about the entire way? So when I talk about the seven to 10 touches, like if they don't set an appointment, you need to have email, automated drips, seven to 15 of them over. If you're a bank, if you're criminal defense, that needs to be in like a week and a half or two weeks. If you're estate planning, string it out over a month, right? Your sales cycles are different. Um, but seven to 10 times, and people are like, oh my gosh, I can't, my intake people don't make outbound calls. They should be making more outbound calls than inbound calls. And I got a story about that as a, a client in New York, when we were talking about this and, 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 and we had just brought him on, he was like, seven to 10? Ha, huh, I do at least 20. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've never heard. I'm like, 20? Okay. Um, and I tell that story at our Rainmaker retreat and I always get chuckles because it's not one of my lame dad jokes, right? So I get chuckles at this every time. And they're like, oh my, I would have never do that. <laughs> he went from a million dollar firm. I think his firm's worth about $28 million right now. He's laughing all the way to the bank. Yeah. Because- he was willing to do what other law firms won't because this is sales. So you can generate all the client, all the leads you want. If you can't convert them, then stop trying to stuff the top of your funnel. Fix your intake and your sales process so that everybody gets, so that way you can rest at night. How, let me ask you this, and I can't get a show of hands here, um, but how many of you sleep well at night knowing all your leads are nurtured to the nth degree? Yeah, I'm I'm guessing that most of the people listening to this podcast are are well, maybe if they've been listening here long enough, they're actually doing pretty well with this. But uh -huh. but I think you know most law firm owners, I mean, you you know this, and I know this, um, don't have you're not they're not doing the best job when it comes to this. The um, best job, they're still answering like oh, you, when when we have our retreats, and and if you come to one, you have to still act surprised. Because we secret shop every, that's how classroom oriented intimate this is. We do audits on their web and their digital, but one day we, we secret shop their law firm. And then I put all the stats up there and then we give them a report. Why? Because you need to know what to fix. There's people ev every time, every time 
we secret shop. Let's say we have 50 people that come. And so we're, you know, secret shopping like 30, 40 law firms. Every single time that in the last three years, we always get a, hello, law firm. Hi, law firm. Like who else does that? It's like, hi, gas station. Hey, bank. It's like, come on. You've got to understand they're used to buying things on Amazon. You have to make it easy. Then that $2,000 investment you put on your marketing can bring in four or five clients because your intake and intake is sales. I wish we could talk, just call it sales, not a so, dirty word. That, so that's a pet peeve of mine. And, and I do call it sales here on the podcast. And I talk about that all the time um, where I, I'm very opposed to the word intake for exactly this reason, because intake is basically the attorney saying that, my job is simply to process you through <laughs> through this process to become a client. When you call me, oh. I'm assuming that you're becoming a client and I'm simply just going through the motions of signing you up. And sales is when I have to convince you that I am the best solution for you to get this Why thing, I'm problem unique? solved. What we right? Do, right? It's like, what's your unique competitive advantage that you can talk about that other people can't? Why are you different from the other firm? Because honestly, when everybody calls your firm, I don't care how, or they send in an email or a form fill or a chat, or they're going to ask you all these red herring questions, right? What about this? And what about, they got one question and they're looking to answer and they never ask it. I do because I'm an informed buyer. So that's right. usually like my second one. They're like, wow. And I'm like, no, this is what I do for a living. And so I do that. Or Why should I hire you? only one question. They're not going to ask it. You have to proactively answer that. That's why intake is so valuable. So that's when so many attorneys come to us, I need more leads. Yeah, you probably, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Let's look at what you're doing first, because you as a small business owner, you can, you can spend a lot of money on marketing. Like if you want to get into a major top five metro area and you want to do pay-per-click, if you're not spending ten to fifteen thousand dollars a month, you're not even going to show up. You can't even spend your budget. And if you're in a major metro area and you're doing LSA ads, and you're not, you know, you can start with a thousand or two, and that should be your 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 first paid marketing that you should ever even think of doing. But if you're in a highly competitive, you're spending five or six thousand dollars, or you're not going to show up in that three pack at the top. So. There's things that you have to do before you start throwing money to the guy that just emailed you. He's 22 years old. Nothing wrong with that. We got a lot of young millennials, really high achieving ones, but that just was like me at the right bowl age of 25. Instead of throwing money at the people that says I can 10 X your firm in two months, instead of doing that, make sure you got your house in order. You got to know your customer journey. What does it take for them to say yes? You've got to get to that point and make it easy and nurture and follow up because they're not all ready to buy right now, just like you were mentioning, right? When you do that, and and because it's like a bucket, your sales funnel is a bucket. Most of you don't even understand or, or not and, and not rightly or wrongly so, just you never learned this and let alone law school, but in from another marketing company, you have a sales funnel. You have stages. You have to have those defined. What happens at this stage? How do I get them to the next? When you have that bucket plugged in and so all your leads aren't leaking out, then you start stuffing it in, right? You do need your phone to ring to sign up clients, but your phone could ring 20 times a month and you could land 11 clients out of that if you did your intake right. And with 11 clients, if your average value is $4,000 versus four clients a month you may be getting now out of those 20 calls, oh my gosh. What would that do? Yeah, that look, you... it reduces your cost of acquisition of a client oh. by half or 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 more, um, which basically just allows you to either spend more on marketing, grow faster, or make more money. Um, and all of those are good things. Um, you know, the, it, it's called a funnel because it's actually natural and and supposed to. You're supposed to lose people along the way. Yeah. And if you're not losing people along the way, you're probably not capturing the right number of people at the top 
to lose along the way. Or you have um, real bad AR uh, problems. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but the, but the thing is, is when, when we work with our coaching clients, and by the way, if you want to know more about our coaching programs, we're not a marketing agency. We help you with the business side of it. Um, and uh, including helping you with, with improving your intake process, but, um, or sales process, but right. there's, you know, everything, right? Like the, the um, the the all of the the mechanisms of of your business running profitably and by the way i'm going to throw something out there that we um, we're talking about more and more a healthy law firm when running at peak capacity which means that everybody's operating at about 80% um that's what i call peak not 140% right not you're, you're burning <laughs> burning everybody's candle on both ends um that law firm should be making somewhere between 35 and 50% profit their profit margins to be 35 to 50%. I, I can tell you, hands down, um, probably 95% of the law firm owners I, I, I walk into, they're either losing money or making less than 15% profit. Yeah. Do you know how hard you have to work to make a living at 10, 15% profit? That means that at a million dollar business, you're making $150,000 a year. That's insane. And the government's taking 50,000, right? So now you got a hundred or, or even more than that, right? So you get your take home after tax pay is a hundred thousand for that, all that effort to get to a million dollars. And then if you got a million dollar firm, you got to upgrade the Toyota to the Lexus. So your the <laughs> firm across the road knows that you're a big time, right? And, yeah. yeah. Well, let's not even get into that. What if it was 35 or 50%? What if you were making 350 or you're making 500,000? What a difference that would make. Right. So it's really important to operate at that level. So if you want to know more information about how we can help you do that, go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash elite, profitwithlaw.com forward slash elite. Check it out. Um, start a conversation with us. We're happy to to weigh in and to help you. Um, but one of the things that we do with our clients that I wanted to share is in this process of the sales funnel at every step of the way, right? The lead comes in, whether it's a phone call, whether it's a form, the lead comes in. Um, from there, it goes to the next step, which could be a, a phone conversation. It could be book a consult. It could be, you know, whatever that next step is. Only some people are going to take that next step. Only some people are going to book that consult. Then they have to show up to the consult, right? It's only some people are going to show up to the consult. When you start tracking those numbers and you look at the conversion rate of what percentage of people ring the phone, versus make a consult, make a consult versus show up to the consult, show up to the consult versus buy at the consult versus buy in the follow-up or don't buy. When you start looking at those percentages, what's going to be interesting is, is suddenly it becomes obvious to you where you need to put your effort in on fixing something. And what's because, oh my gosh, I'm it. losing 50% before they even book the consult. I need to focus on the very beginning and figure out how to get more consults, right? It's not just, oh, I need to fix that, you know, uh, I need to get more people, like I need to have an email sequence at the front end, right? Like look at your numbers and see where the problem is. It could be it's the show up rate, right? Like maybe you just need to be giving out $100 Amazon gift cards to anybody who shows up to a consult. Or text messages, you know? <laughs> a phone call the day before and an email with a video testimonial from one of your previous clients. So what you're, you're absolutely right, Moshe. And that's what we teach when you normally most businesses think they may have five stages. We actually slice it to about eight or nine stages. The reason we and we track each one individually with our Rain Analytics tool. And the reason is when you thinly slice that stage then you can apply specific strategies just to fix that stage. And when you fix that show rate, for example, right? Let's say you close 35% of everybody that shows up to a consultation, but you only have a 71% show rate. Well, what would happen if you had a 95% show rate? You're just going to add more money to your bottom line. And that's how it works with that. And, it, and, and, and I love the fact, and I got to tell you, you're a real smart guy. Not many people even understand that unless they work in the sales intake world intimately, like we do with our systems, because they're like, you know, okay, yeah, here's your, here's some more leads. And how many clients did you get? Right. And so that's, that's real. It's, it's a genius approach and it's not rocket science. So I think for a smaller firm, your best bet, you've got to sketch out your customer journey. Exactly. And I would secret shop it. Right. Um, I would absolutely secret shop it, but 
when you have your stages set up, then just take an Excel spreadsheet if you need to and start tracking how many phone calls, how many set of appointments, how many showed, how many hired now, how many hired later. If you're not getting any hired laters, your nurturing's terrible. If you're not getting enough show rates, here's a couple. So when you look at, don't just look at the numbers, analyze those numbers because that's the lowest hanging fruit. Um, and, and that's going to be the magic of what for small law firms. And I think that works with big law firms. We just signed a 20 attorney law firm in Chicago. One of the biggest family, just family. That's a good size family law firm. They weren't doing these things. They've increased their revenue by about 23% over the last quarter, just by starting to measure and nurture them all along the way. Um, that's the best opportunity. I also wanted to share something else, um, and we can talk about it a little bit if you want, or or I can jump in, is the best opportunity to generate new leads. We've talked about how what, what you need to do to convert them, measure your customer journey, track it, and then implement, because you're like, you, you understand, if nobody's setting appointments, well, what do you need to do? Well, I now need to reevaluate how we ask for the appointment, and then you go and fix it. Right. Um, so if you can get that buttoned up or a lot better, then there's an opportunity I wanted to talk to you about, about how to stuff the top of the funnel for small, medium and large firms that right now, I, my, my daughters are in club volleyball, pretty high level teenage club volleyball. I just finished it. We traveled all across the West, West Coast. It was, it was not a good experience for our time, um, <laughs> like our, our time schedule, family life balance. Right. So I'm happy it's done this season, but now they want private lessons. But so I am not a, a fan of participation trophies. Like my daughters, they have to earn it. You've got to yeah. earn it to get an award, right? Um, but right now, this opportunity, it's like every attorney that's getting into this opportunity, they're all getting participation trophies. Like so, Philip, I think I know up. where you're I think I know where you're going with this. And <laughs> and I, I want to tee it up for you. Um we we have done um so a, a, some significant investment here at Profit With Law in one area of marketing. Um, and our audience should be aware of it. Um, but I, I've talked about it here on the podcast. We also, we recruited a launch team um, in, the, in Q1. Uh, we launched our YouTube channel in March. Um, so what we did was we have a ton of video from our summits, from our podcast recordings that has never seen the light of day, right? It's just never been out there. Mm -hmm. We just never focused on video as a, as a form of marketing. But the reality is, is that when we look at our consumption out there, we're consuming video at a higher and higher rate. Like we're not reading news articles. We're not, we want to catch something. We want to get something quick. Right? We're, and even we look at the, the, the social platforms, um, YouTube is pushing their shorts like crazy. Facebook and, and Instagram pushing reels. TikTok is blowing up because these short form videos are ways for people to get instant um, entertainment or instant information without needing to sit through long form content, without needing to sit down and read a blog post that's 2,500 words. Um, and what we did is we um, spent two days um, creating professional video and uh, basically came up with with uh, 52 topics that we thought would, would good, be good for our audience, would also rank well in SEO. And then I basically bullet pointed them and we sat and, and had those professionally recorded. And those are being dripped out one every single week for the next year. Now, we didn't actually get 52 done in two days. We got 46 <laughs> done, but oh, wow. it's a lot. Um, yep. and, and that has basically just filled up our pipeline with professional video for the year. At the same time, we have on the back end, our team going through and taking all of our old content and not just reproducing it on YouTube, but also taking chunks, like bite-sized pieces of information whenever there's a complete thought and turning that into a real, a short, um, something that, that, we can, that we can put out there as its own standalone piece of content. Um, and we are pushing heavy on video because that's the new opportunity. Philip, is that where you were going? If your clients between the age of, um, I'd say, well, I can even go, I don't know if you're getting clients that are 10 and 13 year olds, but if you're, if you have clientele, they're in the age of uh, 13 to 95, this is where you absolutely have to be. 
Um, but the ironic part of it is um, I have never seen a piece of seven inch plastic in glass and rubber be able to bring the sharpest, the smartest, the, the most intelligent, successful attorney or business owner to their knees quicker than a cell phone that's been turned around with the record button on a video. <laughs> I have never seen a seven inch plastic be able to crumble the biggest person to their knees. You're so intimidated about it. But yet um, I, I, we're in our office here. And I look over here during school and it's a nice little area, mixed residential and, and the fountain and everything. There's the school bus stop over here for the apartments behind our, our building. And then I just see all the kids doing TikTok videos while they're waiting for the bus. And I laugh. Um, but if they can do it, anybody can do it because there's a simple method to this. Because if you don't know what you're doing, and if you say, I'm going to do video, right? Um, you got a couple options. Hire a video company. It's a lot of money. You only got a couple thousand bucks a month to spend in marketing. That's that's all of it, right? And, and then some, right? Um, and then you only get, you did it for 52 or 46 weeks. You were smart about it. A lot of people, and there's people in our industry that will sell you a package of like 10 videos for an enormous amount of cost. And they come out and look like law and order videos. Um, but we run Rainalytics and we know they don't get any response or the open rates. What I'm talking about is real video shot in a DIY process with some professional editing and knowing what you're doing to get it done so you can always put out fresh content. Um, and people are like, well, I know I need video, but what do I say? Well, what's the last question, 10 questions you, you got at your consultation, right? What do your intake staff get questions on? Um, we just had a client that um, there was a celebrity that had been caught the second time with a gun um, on Instagram, and they put out a series of videos. His first video he put out on Monday, and as of Tuesday, Tuesday night, he had 2,500 videos, and about 80% of them were, were within the state, and he was a criminal defense attorney. Um, and not necessarily to, to go after the public celebrity approach, but what I'm talking about is always the fresh content. Because if you're just putting out one or two videos and they're they're there, nobody's going to watch them, right? They're just not. So putting out fresh content in video, and you can do this organically. You mentioned YouTube, but Moshe, YouTube's not even half the value of videos. That's where it absolutely needs to start and stay there. But we're talking distribution to your nurturing emails. You know, one of the neat things we're teaching our clients right now, um, if they don't hire you at the consult, that Two things. One, if you've got a business partner, um, and this is a little side note, have them call them back the same day in the afternoon and say, I know it didn't work out like another attorney, right? But then the next day, you send out a video, what it's like to be a client of our firm, day number one. And it's not like, you know, you, you want to go about their why. What's their why? I, we take everything off your shoulders. All the stress is on us. You got a whole team. But when you put this, what happens day number one, when you become a client and you're assuming the sale and you send out that video to the hundreds and 20 every month, you know, 30 every month, hundreds every year, right? That's going to be some of your most performing highest ROI video. That will make you thousands of dollars every single month if you do that, because people are scared. They don't know how the court system works. They're intimidated. They think you're all the same, right? They think you're all going to charge them an exorbitant amount of money just to talk to them. And then if you put them at ease and talk about their why. So when I'm talking about video, I'm talking doing it really strategically. Like you need to have core videos, like one for each of your services. Not like, well, this is what we do for um, felony charges in the state of Washington. Or this is how you, you know, no, you're like, this is what you talk to their why. And you tell them, put them at ease. It makes you human. And it says, look, you're not a bad person because there was a bad situation. Let us start working on your behalf and get this taken care of with the highest possibility of the best results or whatever it may be. But there's all these opportunities. And then you take those videos and just like what you were saying, Moshe, it's like slice them up into shorts, short videos and reels and start putting, putting them out there on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. That's not hard. And if you don't know, um, I got probably in the, in the fall, I'll tell you about, about 20, 13 year olds that's by my corner. They'll tell you how to do that. Um, they'll show you how to do it. It's not rocket science, but you're like, so what do I say? Do I just wing it? 
Well, if you just wing it and you don't know what you say and you just have a topic in mind, you're going to take 45 takes. It's going to take you two hours. You'll get it done. But it's like a two-hour root canal and an extraction process. Like you're miserable and you just will do it once or twice. You're like, oh, my, it's not even worth it. Because then you're like, why isn't my phone ringing right now? I just made a video. Like, uh, so you really have to have a process and it's not hard. That's the process. Just like I was telling you before, we teach people and you don't have to be a client of ours for us to teach you. We just want to raise the tide for all these law firms to capitalize on this right now. Very few law firms are doing this. And I have to tell you, that's not going to stay that same way because we've already taught about 600 law firms how to do this and they're and, out doing it. You know, when it, when it comes to content, marketing yeah. and video is a form of content marketing right it's just yes, it's just it's transitioning like what like how the videos are are are, are created and performed and received is changing which is creating new opportunities if you're willing to do it this way um but when you're creating any sort of content and marketing that, that way the key or the name of the game is consistency. Oh, don't bother if, if you're not going to be consistent. If you're not consistent, you're wasting your time. Look at this podcast. We release a new episode every single Thursday. We have gotten so much better at it over time, become more efficient. Now we do a podcast recording day. I we, We're now at six recordings in a single day and we do it once a month. And we only release four a month. We're constantly creating an inventory so that if God forbid I couldn't do it for whatever reason for three months or or even not God forbid, like even if it's planned, like, you know, we had a baby uh, 18 months ago and I knew I was going to be out. It turned out my wife had complications and was in the hospital before the pregnant, before the delivery. And then we had the, our son in the NICU. I was out, out. I was not recording podcasts for three months, but we had inventory. We stayed mm -hmm. consistent. If you have a system and a process to, to create and deliver what you're delivering and you take a, a, um, a cadence that you can handle, then you can create consistency. And that's where you, the traction comes. When we first launched this podcast, we had 25 downloads, 30 downloads. You know, now, now like, is this worth it? <laughs> now, now we're 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 in the hundreds of thousands. We have over, you know, we're averaging well over 500 downloads per episode. Um, and it's huge. Like it, it doesn't sound like a lot, but every time I get behind the microphone, I'm talking to a full room at a conference. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And that's what you want when you're producing content is you want to know that there's going to be the eyeballs on it. People are going to be watching, listening. And all of that happens with consistency because that feeds everything. It feeds the the people who are who are who are looking at and, and watching your stuff. They get used to consuming it. The algorithm that's delivering it and putting it in front of other people sees that you're that you're always putting out new stuff. They see that people like it, that, that it's getting eyeballs. They'll give you more eyeballs. Um, and that's really what it takes. And that takes you having a plan of how you're going to do this. When I first started with the podcast, I spent probably 30 to 60 minutes in front of the computer just thinking, what am I going to talk about? And then I spent 30 minutes doing the recording. Right. Like the recording is not the hard part. It's coming up with what am I going to say? That's the hard part. So but that takes a certain part of our brain. So instead of doing that every time you hit record, sit down and spend two hours brainstorming 100 different topics that you can talk about. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a great idea. And you've got there's so many topics everywhere. Like if you're in in. If you're a family law, like we have a mastermind, uh, the third Thursday of every month, just for our video clients. And actually, anybody wants to come in, um, we just strategize on it. Um, and, and that's going to be today, um, later on this afternoon. We're talking about, you know what? Why don't, it's just going to be a minute before um, Harry and his, his wife from the royal family are going to get a divorce. So why aren't you as a divorce attorney talking about that? Right. There was a big gun charge in the news. Now, I'm not saying only go after the celebrity approach, but there's a site called Answer the Public. Right. That's going you type in. It's almost like an AI. You type in there and it's going to tell you what people are searching for on the Web. You go talk to your staff. You know the questions your potential clients ask and they ask and they ask the same ones and over and over with a different flavor. And you get a tough one. That's content. You just start thinking about it differently. Intake staff. What's 20 questions that, that people ask you? Well, there's 20 videos. 
right? I, I would, <laughs> yeah, I, I would argue that anybody listening to this podcast could sit down and come up with a hundred things yeah. that they wish their clients knew either before they came in the door or while working with them. Yeah. I'm sure you can come up with a hundred. It's yeah. when you get beyond that, that you might start, it might start getting difficult, but this is not pieces of content. This is just ideas. Like, mm -hmm. um, what are the rules about assets? What happens if I have an IRA and my wife has it? My spouse soon to be ex has an IRA. What, what happens to my kids? What are the rules in my state? What if I got to preach almost? criminal charge in Washington state? Like all of these things, content is everywhere around attorneys. You just have to, right. You're right. Use that different part of your brain and think about it. And, and, and then it comes real easy. And if you have that list, then you can simply just Look at it and say, what am I inspired to talk about today? Choose one. Boom. Get in front of you know the stuff. It's not like it's not like you have to prepare. You know the content. It's just a matter of executing. And the thing that's going to hold you back the most is what do I talk about? And that's so easy to 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 resolve. So um, it is, but I do want to put a, an asterisk in that really quick because there's so many, uh, there's a lot of attorneys that are just trying to do this on their own, right? Um, and the thing is that we consume videos differently. Like we'll just keep swiping left on our Facebook reel when we don't like it, right? I won't even listen to the whole video. So how do you capture that? There's actually a formula with a hook, an intro, three points or two points and a case study, and then your call to action. What we do for our clients is we've got about 30 different templates for different types of videos. And so let's say it's a case study or a testimonial or an education or how it works video or whatever it may be, um, or a profile video for your attorney. It's like, you just kind of fill it in like Mad Libs. So that way, when you're doing the recording, there's a couple tips. Um, you have that script in front of you and you're looking at the camera, your cell phone on a tripod and in a room in a location that you've already pre-set up. So you can just come into that room and sit down and start recording. So if you have to fumble and set it all up, you just never do it. But if you do that, put your camera on the tri on the on the tripod, sit in front of it. You've got your script, and we do it a little bit different way. But this is a really do DIY approach. You okay? I've got two sentences that I have to remember in a bullet. Okay, and you go up and you speak, and you never turn the camera off. If you mess up, you just back up and then you let your editors make you really attractive and, and, and exciting. And then when you go through that process, you've got a location, you're using your cell phone, the equipment you already have, and then you know what the topic is and you filled out this little template. And then all you have to do is remember one or two sentences at a time. And you're looking down, you're looking up and you're saying, talking to the camera. And then you let the editors figure all of the rest of that out. But then the key is now you've got a video that's pointed, that's quick and short, but then the key is distribution because who's going to get their eyes on it? And that's what we teach our clients, how, how and where you should put your time. Here's the lowest hanging fruit to distribute. Here's the quickest type topics you should be covering. Here's how you set up your shoot room. Here's the exact equipment that you need. And here's how you edit and distribute it. And that's what we teach our clients because when you put that process in place, Here's the end result. Here's what happens. Um, you learn how to shoot every video. You learn how to script any video in under five minutes. It works every single time. Script any video, long form, short form, in five minutes or less, and you'll be able to shoot any video you want in one to two takes in under 15 minutes. Then you'll start creating your content. That's the key. And yeah, I, Philip, this is uh, incredible stuff, and I I wish that we had more time because yeah. we I I'm sure we can we can talk about video at length too, oh. um, but we we covered the tip of the iceberg. I think we wet the appetite of our audience. Um, what I want to ask you is this because we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here. Yep. Um, is there something that they can go to a resource that you have that will help them with this getting started process of how how do I dip my toe? into video is there something that that you can point them to 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 take the next step if if they're buying into hey we need to do video and i'm not about to plunk down you know tens of thousands of dollars to have just a handful of professionally made videos done i also recognize that professionally made videos are not 
they are not the only place that it's at, right? Like <laughs> that they don't work as well. They just what, don't. What, what what works really well, you know, now is something that you can just share in your stories that you can just put on TikTok, which is just a thought, right? It's like 60 seconds, 15 yes. seconds, 30 seconds, and, and you're done. Like, how do I how do I get started with that? And how do I start to get traction with that? Um, if you have a resource to share with our audience, I would love if you did that. And at the same time, um, as we close this out, I always ask each of my uh, each of my guests to share like one parting piece of wisdom or advice uh, with our listeners. So uh, I'm going to give you the stage to close this out for us. Okay, thank you. Um, and I really appreciate my time. We could literally talk and and, and, and continue and I do want to continue this. Um, so those last two pieces really combine, you know, because you can tell I'm really passionate about intake, because if if somebody tells me they have a good law firm, I ask that I can find out within about 30 seconds to a minute. I just tell them, tell me about your intake, your sales process, right? And I can tell a good, that's the difference between a good and a great firm is your intake. But once you solidify your intake, you still need your phone to ring. So honestly, the number one opportunity for law firms right now, this big blue ocean participation trophy given is video. And there's an easy way that you can do this on your own. So what we've done is um, we've got a site, rainmakervideo.com, um, and that's going to give you a little bit more information. It's not a sales pitch. I'm not looking to sell you services. I'm looking to educate you on how to do this. And then if it makes sense and you've got the money versus the time, we'd love to explore what that means. But we just want to educate you, right? We just want you to start your own journey on this. Just, just do this, right? If you take nothing else away, just start with video, right? Um, and so... On RainmakerVideo.com, we also have just started what we call a 21-day challenge where we deep dive into all of these things over three weeks. And that's where we give you all of the meat and potatoes. And here's the templates. Here's the equipment list. Here's the scripts. Here's the process. Everything. But on RainmakerVideo.com, we're gonna have, we have more information on kind of what this what video means to attorneys and how to start this process on your own. Because we know that if you just put a camera up and start talking to it, after you pick yourself up off the floor, because you're going to be nervous, right? You're like, okay, 45 takes later, video is no good for me. That's for the other people that are entertaining because I'm, I'm boring a tax attorney. No, we make those exciting too. We want to show you how you can do this yourself so you can start that process. And then the best place is put it on YouTube, but then drip it out. Create content that is what your potential clients need to know, like that have already called your firm, like the nurturing type of marketing, not the lead gen, the lead gen, pure making your phone ring with video, you're going to need to invest some consistency and a little bit of money on the nurturing side of it. Those ones that have already called you. So how do you get 20 phone calls? You want to sign up 11, put in a whole series of videos that you're dripping to them over a week or two or three. That is magic. And then when you have a place to shoot it, you've got the equipment, You've got the scripts. That's all the stuff that we'll teach you when you go to rainmakervideo.com. We're going to show you those things on there. And I think that will give you a really good, deep overview of what this takes. And when you break it down, just like intake, when you break this down, you're like, oh, that's actually not as difficult as I thought it was because now I'm working, I'm, I'm going through the process of another company that's done this. We've shot over 10,000 videos doing this process. So we've done a couple of them. We just want to teach you how that process works. RainmakerVideo.com. You'll get it all there. And I got to tell you, other than solidifying your intake and making sure you know your customer journey and plugging those holes, because you'll never be a successful firm if you don't do that. But then if you want to generate more clients, start with the video nurturing of those leads that have already contacted your firm. What it's like to work with us day number one, a profile video before they come to their appointment about the attorney, what they're passionate about in life, what they like to do, like family, like make you human. You give that, send that video out to everybody who set an appointment, your appointment rates will skyrocket to 90, 95% show rate. And then you have more opportunity to close the business. That's the stuff, the practical strategies with video. Do that with video. And then you've already started the journey. Then look for the shinier nickels, like we've been talking about. Do the stuff, the lowest hanging fruit. I'm always, I'm, I'm always a big fan of that. When you assess what's going on in your firm, look for the easiest opportunities to generate more revenue right now. Then you can start getting more sophisticated like you've done with your podcast.
Yeah, you know, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna close it out, but you did say something that I, I want to lean into for just a quick moment, and that is that we as business owners, we often think that we need to make our business complicated to be successful. And the reality is is that business is really easy. And if you take the easiest route every day, you're going to have massive success. It's when you try to overcomplicate things that you get lost in this in the com in the complexity and never actually produce anything or do any any work or any anything productive. Um, so definitely listen to to Philip's advice there and uh, keep it simple and, and just get it started right and 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 just start doing it. So really good stuff. I I enjoyed this this talk immensely and I know we went longer than we normally go on an interview. So for those of you who 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 um, stayed with us through this, maybe we might even chunk it into two episodes. I don't know. I'll let my team handle that. We have a podcast producer. Um, her name is Mimi Amsel. She might be related to me. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, she'll make the ultimate decision on this. But what I will say is this, and that is if this is your first time listening to the Profit With Law podcast, and this is the first episode that you're listening to, first of all, great, because we made a great first impression. Um, but you want to make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you get notified every time we release a new episode. We're here every single Thursday with a brand new guest interview for you. And we bring amazing people just like Philip here on the show. Um, and it's my pleasure and honor to serve to serve them up to you, but also to ask questions and try to get them to extract the most information for you out of the conversation. I think, um, I, you know, I, I loved our discussion today and I think that you did as well. Um, and if you've been listening to this show, for a while you're already subscribed we'd love it if you took the time to leave a rating and review um we 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 feed on that just like your law firm does um and uh it would really help us immensely to do that uh, and the last thing is just share this with somebody like if you have another law firm owner that you're friends with uh that could get something out of this um, just send them a quick text, say, Hey, check this podcast episode out. It's really good. Um, and, and spread the, spread the love, uh, of our, of our show. Uh, and I'm going to, uh, in our show notes, we have all the resources for you. So we'll have Phillips link linked up, to, li linked up for you there. Um, as well as the one I'm about to give you again. So if you want to explore what it might look like to work with me and my coaches, uh, to help you in becoming the most highly profitable business that you can be the best version of yourself, um, go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash elite um, and, and check it out. You know, look at the opportunity, see, see if it's something you want to explore. Um, there's ac absolutely no cost to go to that website and look at it um, and start to think about whether we can make a difference in your trajectory of the growth of your business. And if you think that we, that we might be able to, then it might be worth exploring. Um, and we'd love to have a conversation with you. So Philip, thank you very much for being here, folks. We'll catch you next week. Take care and um, maybe start exploring using video in the marketing of your law firm. Have a great day.